Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at negative externalities of production. We're going to go through the diagram, how to construct it, and the possible government solutions to negative externalities of production. Okay, so this isn't that much different than the rule of 11 graph that I've talked to you about in the past, right? You take a look here. You got, you got the price. You got the, the currency, P1. That, there should be a zero down here. Let me put that in. There should be a zero down here. Right, you got your quantity, you got your you got your Q1, your quantity in units, and it should say per year or something. And then over here, you look, this is a little bit different. You got the title, of course, but the marginal social cost equals marginal private cost, and then you got MSB, which re represents the marginal social benefit. Now remember from the, the 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 video on market and allocative efficiency, this is really the demand curve renamed. And the marginal social cost curve is really this, the, and, and the marginal private cost curve is really the supply curve renamed. And this is important to talk about. We'll talk about how there are really two lines here in a second, the marginal social benefit and the marginal private benefit. But there's actually two lines here, the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost. It's important that you know that, that you think about it that way, because what's going to happen is the private cost, this is the original supply curve. These are the private costs to the firm, like in supply. The social cost is a new concept that we've added that is these are the cost to society, the social welfare of society. If the costs of producing something are higher than the private costs, then this marginal social cost curve is going to have to be moved and it's going to be moved upward because there's going to be increase in cost, right? So let's take a look at how that would look. But it's important to think of, to, re, to kind of get in your mind that the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost curves, when they're equal, Bueno, everything is in perfect equilibrium. You have consumer surplus here. Everything's maximized. This is your, 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 your point of maximum allocation of resources. But when, let's say, uh, there's pollution going on in society, some factory is producing something that's polluting, it's creating social costs. That, that causes respiratory and lung problems for people. And that's not represented in the private cost of the production of something. So we're going to use an example in a second, but I just want to lay that out for you. So let's take a look at the negative externality of production graph as it will look when you use it. Okay, here it is. Um, and take a look at what happened. The marginal private cost. This is, and this is a nice way of thinking about it, this is the original supply curve, private costs. Remember, the, the a supply curve really is representative of the marginal in, the increasing marginal cost of producing something to the private company. Okay, but let's take an example. Let's say when I mean, you talk about a paint factory in a second that's going to pollute. So the produ production of paint is going to cause an external negative impact on society. So what does that look like? Well, that means that the social cost is higher, right? And I like to go down here. This, you know, the, the, this is a representative of the minimum cost of the production of, say, paint. But the, the, the actual cost of society, when you consider the pollution that's taking place in the production of it, is higher. So the marginal social cost curve is going to have to be moved off of that line. Remember, we we're talking about them being on top of one another. And upward, represented by the increased cost of society, external cost of society, as a result of the pollution being created by the production of paint. Okay. So let's go through the, um, and, and it, like a specific example, because I think it helps you understand what is going on here. Okay, so if a paint factory were to emit fumes that were harmful to people in the area, then there's a cost to the community that is greater, right, than the cost of the production paid by the firm. The firm has its private costs, which is right, represented by the pri marginal private cost curve. But on top of that, it's creating external costs. Thus, the marginal social cost of production, marginal social cost, is greater than the marginal private costs. Okay. So as we can see, the marginal private costs of the firm are below the social costs. They basically, this is the original supply curve of producing paint. Because there's an external extra cost society caused by the pollution that is created, such as respiratory problems for people in the neighborhood of the polluting firm, the firm will only be concerned with its private costs and therefore will, would, is going to continue, right? It's going to continue to produce Q1 quantity of paint. 
But as you can see, this isn't what's best for society. What would be best for society is actually a reduction in the production of paint to a place where this point A is. And this point A is going to be really important. This is the allocative efficient point, the socially efficient output. Okay, And that's going to happen in terms of a negative externalities production graph where marginal social cost equals the marginal social benefit or the original demand curve. So there is a misallocation of society's resources. Too much paint, if you think about it, too much paint is being produced for what would be best for society because the marginal social cost is what would be best for society. Okay, so optimally for society, Q2 would be produced. But the, 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 the private paint company doesn't care as much as you would think. And they're going to continue to produce at Q1. Okay, so there, therefore, there's a new concept here that's called welfare loss. You'll also see, and it's the same thing, it's called dead weight loss. But the firm is producing here. But really, it should be producing here if it, all of the costs, all of the social costs, and the, all the private costs were taken into account. And so what's happening here is this is an extra cost to society, a loss of goodness, of welfare to society as a result of production of paint. And so the government is going to be asked to do something. And what the government will, will want to do, if you think about it, is try to reduce the area, reduce this loss of welfare. They're going to try to, as much as they can, if you think about it, you got the answers in your head. The marginal private cost curve, this is the original supply curve. If they were to tax this uh, paint, let's say, then they could raise the cost of the private cost of the firms, and that would create a smaller area of welfare loss. Ideally, they'd tax them so much that it would they could they would move the marginal private cost curve all the way back on top of the marginal social cost curve. But that's probably unlikely. Okay, so let's take a look at, at a few solutions. Um, and we'll go through uh, what the government could possibly do. Okay, so in a free market, so possible government solutions to negative externalities of production. In a free market, this situation would continue because non because profit-making firms will only take into account their private costs, right? The paint company only really cares about the private costs. So it's up to the government. And I the government to rectify the situation by cutting out as much welfare loss as possible, uh, making that black... Uh, triangle as small as possible. Why the government? Because remember, the government's like the parents of a country. They're the ones who are asked to come in and solve problems um, between you know citizens in the country. Just like the parents are the ones who come in and solve problems with children in a family, okay, or in a household. So here are the possible solutions. They could tax firms to increase their private costs. They could legislate. By banning polluting firms, they could just ban paint production, if you think about it, or restricting their output in some way. Or they could slap down tradable emissions permits, which we'll talk about what these are a little bit later. But those, these are the three options, to tax, to legislate, and to uh, create tradable emissions permits. So let's take a look at the first solution, taxing firms to increase their private costs. If the company, if the government were to do this, it could tax the firm in order to increase the firm's private costs and therefore shift the marginal private cost curve, that's the original supply curve, upwards towards the point of social efficiency. That was that point A. If the tax is equal to all of the external costs, then we would say the government has internalized the externality, which is said, force the paint company to pay for all of the extra costs. That's unlikely though, right? And if the tax is not equal to the external costs, then it will reduce the welfare loss, but not totally eliminate it. And there's, if there still is a, law, a welfare loss, but it's less than under the free market with no government intervention. So that's basically just trying to make that black triangle as small as possible. And let's take a look at what the graph would look like in that case. All right, here it is. So, th so this is the original marginal private cost curve, right? This is the original marginal social cost curve. And you see this triangle right here, right, is the original welfare loss. Now, if the government were to in, put a tax on the, the, the private firms, the marginal private cost would go higher. It would be the marginal private cost plus, plus what? Plus the tax, right? This is basically the indirect tax graph. And what would that mean? Well, that would mean that the total welfare loss, right, 
would be reduced down to the area of that small triangle, and they would be getting closer to the socially optimal point of point A, which is right there. So you can see how, as a result of doing that, the original welfare loss was this entire triangle, right? And now they've reduced that down to this black area. So what they've done is they have forced the private company to pay for part of the costs to society as a result of the negative externality production in the example we were using was paint. Okay, so this would be the solution you would use, or the best solution, I think the easiest solution to use, in the evaluation portion of an answer on a paper one question. All right, so are there some drawbacks, though? Well, of course there are. Take a look. Tax, tax, this is the same thing in evaluation. There are some problems with the tax, however. One, it would be difficult to measure accurately the pollution created and to put a value on it. Uh, to be regained by the tax. So, like, what is the value of the social cost? And, and, and it, you need to know that in order to have a tax that would cover all of those costs, and that's kind of different to do. The second thing is it's difficult to identify which firms are polluting and to what extent each is responsible for pollution, right? If you have a smoggy city, wh how do you tax each particular, you know, how do you gauge who's, taxed, who's polluting more and then put an appropriate tax on the, on the production, right? And three, it is often argued that taxes do not actually stop the pollution from taking place, right? You can't, if, you know, private firms have a way of making money and making sure they continue to make money. So that's, these are three shortfalls, right, problems with the tax. And these are really helpful things to use in your evaluation of a tax being uh, slapped on private firms for the cost of production to eliminate the marginal social costs or as much as possible. All right, let's look at some other solutions. The government could legislate by banning polluting firms or restricting them, right? The government could legislate and ban the polluting firms or restrict their output in some way. It could pass laws relating to measurable environmental standards in the firm's production units. That would, that would increase costs and therefore decrease production. To meet the standards, the firms have to spend money, right? Thus increasing their private costs, thus taking away parts of that black triangle. There's some problems with this, right? One, the ban or restriction may lead to unemployment and non-consumption of whatever that was being produced, which may have a value, which may have been a valuable product. I mean, paint's a good thing to have, right? You don't want to like ban all paint companies because people like using paint, and paint's a valuable uh, commodity, maybe in a society, to make your your city look uh, cleaner and prettier. Um, and not to mention, if you're a government and you slap a ban on and there's increased unemployment, you're going to become unpopular. So you might be putting yourself out of a job. And secondly, the problems with the, with the solution of banning is the cost of setting um, and then policing the ban may be greater than the cost of the pollution. Right? Governments are going to, going to have to spend money in order to, to police the, the ban. And maybe that's even worse for the government or the society as a whole, more money is being spent on fighting it than it would have been the cost of, of, of having it or leaving it. Okay, so there's the second possible solution and some downfalls of that solution. And here's the third. Tradable emissions permits. Okay, the government could issue these things, and what they are is a market-based solution to negative externalities of production. So tradable emission permits are issued by the government and give firms the license, permission, to create pollution up to a set level. Think of it as having like a, like a, like kind of like a quota on pollution. And you can, you can pollute up to a certain point, and then once you, you pollute that much, you have to stop. Or you could buy more permissions, permits to emit, <laughs> so permit, permits to emit pollution, right? So if you had 10 and then you polluted up to 10, you could buy, sell, and trade for permits on the open market. So if you need to, if you need to pollute more, you could buy some more emissions permits. And then it, maybe you actually found out that you don't need to per pollute that much. <laughs> you could sell those to people who want to pollute. And, and in many ways, you know, what you're doing is you're passing on the right to pollute to other places, maybe, which is getting to some problems. So these are also known as a cap-and-trade system. Um, a lot of these, some of these are used internationally too. So the government decides upon the level of pollution and then splits the total level of pollution up into a number of tradable permission emissions permits, 
little certificates that give pe- give companies or firms the ability to pollute, each allowing a certain level of pollution. At this point, the market takes over. If you want to pollute, you got to buy a permit from other firms. So that sounds good. It's a private, a private, uh, free market way of kind of selling permission to pollute and therefore it's more costly for firms to pollute because if they pollute too much they got to buy more of these permits which would increase their costs okay but of course there's some problems to this solution which we'll talk about right now the first problem with this solution is that the solution does not lead necessarily to the reduction of, of pollution right once the allowable limit has been set Maybe the set, how do you know where the allowable limit is? And it might not be accurate enough to actually reduce pollution. And the second thing is the government faces a difficult decision to allow pollution. They're basically giving permission to pollute and then to decide at what levels. And it's a really complicated thing to try to figure out. So these are two downfalls of the third solution to uh, 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 negative externalities of production, tradable emissions permits. All right, I, this is a long video, but I, I think it's helpful to put all of that stuff together. Uh, uh, negative externalities of production graph, you got to know it, and you got to know the solutions. And I hope through this video you've you got some good ammunition to use both in the analysis and evaluation portion of your questions you might face on the IB exam. All right, I hope you found this video to be helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.